Black Myth Wukong has been making waves since the developers, Game Science released its first trailer back in August of 2020. Its stunning graphics, the Souls-like style of gameplay, and epic boss battles wowed over many people, not only in China but from around the world. Not to mention that the story revolves around the Monkey King, Sun Wukong, one of the most important mythological characters in China. So today we'll be discussing some facts that we know about this game and what you should know before making the purchase. Without Without further ado, hit that subscribe button if you like game videos, lore, and more fun stuff. It helps me out and you can always reconsider later. Now let's get started. Sun Wukong had a major reveal trailer in August of 2020. The developers, Game Science, made the trailer where Sun Wukong fights Ling Xiu Si. Sorry if I butchered the name to bring in new investors and make the shareholders happy with the game. But what they did not realize that this video would go viral. People from all around the world saw it and everyone wanted to get their hands on it. Its stunning graphics, smooth souls-like fighting style, and of course the setting where we get to play as the Monkey King himself was enough to get people hooked. Since then, the company has released a state of the game video in August every year to keep their shareholders happy, but mainly to keep up the hype of the game. People are going crazy with the videos and trailers they release, but one of the major concerns for the game are its requirements. It's an Unreal Engine 5 game and we all know what that engine is capable of. It can produce almost real looking objects and scenes, but at the cost of using large amounts of power. Just look at Senua's saga Hellblade 2 for example. It's a stunning game just like Black Myth, but it suffered from optimization. People were having trouble running it from a system having a 3080 on it, so the concern for Black Myth having the same issue is valid. For the fast-paced boss fights, where the game requires the player to have decent reaction times, running smoothly is one of the main requirements. This problem, however, can be solved easily with cloud gaming, and that's where Boosteroid comes in. It's a cloud gaming service that provides you with a powerful machine that can play the latest and greatest of games, play the best games from any kind of hardware you want. All you need is Chrome to run the games. With the power of cloud gaming, you can even play PC games on Android and with your smart TV with Boosteroid. It's very simple. Just subscribe, connect to your Steam, Origin, Epic Games or other accounts that have your games on it and you can just play. There is no session limit so you can play as much as you want. But I do have to tell you that you have to check your connection with the servers first. There is a testing tool right on their website. If you have a good connection, you are all set up. You can play the huge catalog of games there. There are a few games that are free to play as well. For the rest of the games, you will need to connect your respective account where you have purchased the game from. To know more, check out my link in the description. Coming back. The good news is that people and the content creators who have played this game for testing it out have said that it runs perfectly fine and there were little to no stutters. But we don't know what kind of systems they were using and they played through a section which the devs gave them. So take that with a grain of salt. When I was editing this video, the reviews came in for those who got their copies early and they are saying that there are some bugs and optimization issues for the PC port. Not many reviews from the console side for now but time will tell. Sun Wukong in its core has souls-like element engraved in it, but it's also very different. Looking at the trailers, we can see that the boss fights and exploration looks very much like any souls-like. I might say souls-like a lot in this video, so bear with me a little. You gain EXP fighting bosses and enemies and lose them if you die. These EXPs are required to upgrade, so you can collect them from the same place where you died after resurrecting. One cool thing about this game is that the bosses seems to remember if you died, as they call you out for it. This game also has many hidden areas which reward you with loot and sometimes a full-on boss fight. Although it looks like any other Souls-like with epic bosses and great graphics, the developers say that they took inspiration from Devil May Cry and Bayonetta series. Its fast-paced battles can be attributed to that. People are speculating that it's a boss rush type of game where there is little to no running section and there are constant boss battles. But the devs said that this is not the case. The game is pretty linear and not an open world like Elden Ring. However, there are open areas where the player can explore. This game is speculated to have over 160 different enemy types and over 80 boss battles. Wow, 
that's a lot. For a game that is said to be only 15 to 20 hours long, having 80 bosses looks incredible. Maybe that is what prompted people to believe that the game is a simple boss rush, souls-like game. Also in the game, we get one main weapon, our staff. There are no different weapon types. Instead, you get to upgrade your staff and have different abilities and stances. We will get into that more in the next section. Speaking of which, let's dive right in. Let's talk about how the gameplay will work. You begin with basic gear and staff. According to the developers, the staff is the only weapon you get throughout the game. As to whether or not there are different types of staffs are yet to be confirmed. But looking at the trailers, there does seem to be variations in the staffs. You can upgrade it just like any other RPG by investing the EXP you gain by defeating bosses and enemies. You will also get the option to reset the skill points put into the staff if you think the upgrade is not useful to you, which is a good quality of life feature for the first playthrough as you won't have any idea of what's good or what's bad. We also unlock 3 stances for the weapon. These 3 stances are unlocked as we progress through the story, and each stance has its own advantages and disadvantages. For example, the third stance lets you go high up in the air, which can let you dodge some attacks, and also lets you hit a devastating heavy attack on the enemy. There is no blocking or parrying in this game, but dodging and perfect dodges grants you focus. This focus allows heavy hits to deal much higher damage. There are also lots of other combos and features that require focus, so managing it will be a priority. There are also the basics of any ARPG. You have a stamina bar which depletes when running, attacking and dodging. There is also a mana bar which is used to cast spells. Speaking of spells, the company puts a huge emphasis on it. There are a lot of upgrade parts for it and looks like there are a lot of different ones as well. One of the most epic mechanics of this game is that we can transform into one of the bosses that we have defeated. This consumes a large amount of focus and has a huge cooldown timer, so it can be abused. But transforming into a white wolf in the middle of a fight does seem cool. As discussed, Sun Wukong is being made by Game Science. They are a relatively new game studio. Just look at the Wikipedia page for this company. Not a lot compared to someone like Ubisoft. They made mobile games before this. With all the knowledge and resources they got from their previous ventures, they decided to make a PC game. And that's exactly what they did. But why does it matter? Well, it does not. Having a good number of great games under your belt nowadays tends to mean nothing. Just look at Redfall made by Arkane Studios. They made the Dishonored series and Prey, which were really good. And then they made Redfall, which was quickly discontinued. So people worried about, oh, this is a new game company and this won't be a polished game, should not be a big concern. Many people and content creators got their hands on it for a few hours and all of them had good things to say about it. Until there is a massive concern in gameplay and or bugs running on the PC port. Worrying about the game studio should not be the biggest concern. Again, while I was editing, there were news that this game has problems with bugs and other stuff. Hopefully they get resolved with a day one patch, but the overall reviews seem to be good with most of the score hovering around 8 to 9 out of 10 mark. The game is set to release on 20th of August 2024, which is not far away now. Only a couple more days to go. It is said to be around $60, so no quadruple A prices of $70. The devs said that the average time to complete the game would be around 15 to 20 hours, but that was said around 2 years ago. Since then, they've made a lot of changes and it won't be surprising if the land has increased exponentially. The minimum and recommended requirements on the Steam page looks decent. It's definitely on the expensive side, but with the graphics they have shown in the trailers, I expect it to be way higher if you want it to look good. As for microtransactions, there is nothing confirmed on this topic, but there may be some costumes or skins that they might sell later on. As according to this article, Game Science wants player to be open to the idea of it. It also will have Denuvo, so that is a big downside for this game. Sad to see that it's still being used, but piracy seems to be on the rise and the companies are doing whatever they can to safeguard their games. 
I am very excited for this game and I will definitely make a story explained video on it. So be sure to check it out and subscribe so you don't miss it. Again, check out Boosteroid if you want to play games right now on your browser without the hassle of looking for the specs requirements. Link in the description. That's all from me. If you enjoyed, consider hitting that like button. See you in the next one.